City by City forecasts as Hurricane Milton sweeps toward Florida's west coast. Milton remains on track to slam into the west coast of Florida early Thursday as a large and powerful hurricane, bringing a destructive storm surge, damaging winds, and severe flooding to many of the same areas still reeling from Hurricane Helene's devastating flooding and winds less than two weeks ago, after probably making landfall within 100 miles of Tampa on Thursday morning. Milton is expected to track eastward across central Florida as it spreads strong winds, heavy rain and the potential for tornadoes in much of the state. It could be one of the most powerful hurricanes to ever strike Florida's central western coast. It's still uncertain whether Milton Center will track almost directly over or just north of Tampa, which would be a worst-case scenario for the flood-prone city, or if it will track a bit to the south. It's also still uncertain if the storm will maintain its current Category 4 intensity or weaken to a Category 3 hurricane before reaching Florida's west coast. Either way, the storm is predicted to roughly double in size before landfall and will almost certainly deliver a historic, life-threatening storm surge a rise in ocean water over normally dry land along a large portion of Florida's west coast, with damaging winds and heavy rain penetrating well inland. A smaller but still dangerous storm surge is predicted along the northern portion of Florida's east coast and northward along the coast of Georgia and southeastern South Carolina as the storm emerges into the Atlantic Ocean. Here are the forecasts for six Florida cities in or near Milton's path. Tampa What local forecasters are saying, if Milton stays on its course this will be the most powerful hurricane to hit Tampa Bay in over 100 years. No one in the area has ever experienced a hurricane, hurricane this strong before the National Weather Service office serving the Tampa Bay area said in a forecast discussion. Storm surge, life-threatening and historic storm surge of 10 to 15 feet above ground level possible, window of concern from Wednesday through Thursday evening. Small shifts in the storm track could significantly increase or decrease the surge. Impacts Water possibly reaching several miles inland. Nearshore escape routes and secondary roads washed out or severely flooded. Structural damage to buildings with many washing away. Battering waves and massive damage to marinas, docks and piers. Numerous small craft broken away from moorings, lifted onshore and stranded. Locations may be uninhabitable for an extended period. Peak winds, sustain 90 to 110 miles per hour, gusts to 125 miles per hour, strongest winds from Wednesday afternoon to Thursday afternoon. Small shifts in the storm track could significantly increase or decrease the winds. Impacts Structural damage to some sturdy buildings. Complete destruction of mobile homes. Large airborne projectiles. Numerous trees down, many roads and bridges impassable. Widespread power and communication outages. Rainfall, 8 to 12 inches. Flooding rain threat, high, level 4 out of 4. Wednesday morning through Thursday morning. Impacts Floodwaters can enter numerous buildings, some becoming uninhabitable or washed away. Streets and parking lots can become rivers of raging water with underpasses submerged. Rivers and streams may overwhelmingly overflow their banks. Numerous road and bridge closures with some weakened or washed out. Numerous evacuations and rescues may be necessary. Sarasota what local forecasters are saying, this is a very serious storm, Bob Harrigan, chief meteorologist at ABC7 in Sarasota, said during a broadcast. Typically, they say about 20% of the people on the islands stay. I hope that no one stays. This is going to be a similar storm surge that we saw in Fort Myers during Ian, which killed 66 people because they chose to stay out there on the island. Storm surge, life-threatening and historic storm surge of 10 to 15 feet above ground level possible, window of concern from Wednesday through Thursday evening. Small shifts in the storm track could significantly increase or decrease the surge. The surge impacts could be similar to those in Tampa, especially if the storm track shifts south some. Peak winds, sustained at 75 to 95 miles per hour, gusts to 125 miles per hour, strongest winds from Wednesday afternoon through Thursday afternoon. Small shifts in the storm track could significantly increase or decrease the winds. The wind impacts could be similar to those listed for Tampa if the track shifts south. Otherwise, they will be serious but probably not quite as extreme. Rainfall, 4 to 8 inches. Flooding rain threat, moderate, level 3 out of 4, Wednesday morning through Thursday morning.
The flood impacts should be somewhat tamer than in Tampa, unless the storm shifts south. Fort Myers What local forecasters are saying, I can't stress this enough, even if Milton makes landfall closer to Sarasota-Tampa Bay, there will still be major impacts in southwest Florida, Jason Dunning, a meteorologist at NBC2 in Fort Myers, said in a Facebook post. The biggest concern by far is storm surge, which will occur south of where the storm, storm makes landfall. This means our area is in the threat zone for storm surge. Please take this storm seriously regardless of whether or not it's a direct hit. Storm surge, life-threatening and historic storm surge of 6 to 10 feet above ground level possible, window of concern from early Wednesday morning through Thursday evening. Small shifts in the storm track could significantly increase or decrease the surge. The surge impacts could be similar to those listed for Tampa and Sarasota, although the water probably will not be quite as high unless the storm shifts south. Peak winds, sustained at 25 to 40 miles per hour, gusts to 75 miles per hour. Small shifts in the storm track could significantly increase or decrease the winds. These winds could bring down trees and wires and result in widespread power and communication outages. Rainfall, 2 to 4 inches. Flooding rain threat, moderate, level 3 out of 4. Areas of flooding are possible, but impacts from rain should be somewhat less than in Tampa and Sarasota. Orlando. What local forecasters are saying, one thinks, wind, when you think hurricane, but for central Florida away from the Gulf and Atlantic, the worst overall damage looks to be from flooding rains, Brooks Garner, senior meteorologist at Fox 35 in Orlando, said in a Facebook post. Yes, power will likely go out with falling limbs and a few trees, but communities along and north of the center will see 8-15 of rain inside of 8 hours, leading to flash flooding which could enter homes. Peak winds, sustained at 60 to 80 miles per hour, gusts to 95 miles per hour, window of concern Wednesday evening to Thursday afternoon. Small shifts in the storm track could increase or decrease the winds. The wind impacts are likely to be only slightly tamer than in Tampa and Sarasota, meaning there is the potential for widespread power outages and scattered damage to homes and businesses. Rainfall, 6 to 10 inches. Flooding rain threat, high, level 4 out of 4, Wednesday evening through Thursday afternoon. The impacts from flooding rains could be serious and comparable to those described for Tampa. Miami. What local forecasters are saying, for South Florida this not going to be a huge deal for us. We are going to be dealing with some rain. We are going to be dealing with some wind. But this is an event that we will get through just fine here locally, Casey Sherman, meteorologist at CBS News in Miami, said during a broadcast. Peak winds, sustained at 20 to 30 miles per hour, gusts to 45 miles per hour, strongest winds from Wednesday evening through Thursday morning. Minimal impacts are probable. Rainfall, 1 to 3 inches. Flooding rain threat, moderate, level 3 out of 4, Tuesday through Thursday morning. Jacksonville. What local forecasters are saying, there is still plenty of uncertainty in this forecast so impacts will be changing and will have to be amended slash updated, Mike Baresh, chief meteorologist at Fox 30 in Jacksonville, said in a Facebook post. The exact track will be critical for how much rain falls, there will be strong winds area-wide but strongest over NEFL and the coast of Asiga AS of right now, it continues to look like the greatest impacts to the local area will be south and east of hardest hit areas from Helene. Storm surge, a storm surge of 3 to 5 feet above ground level possible, window of concern Wednesday morning through Friday morning. A surge this high could flood coastal roads, with water entering some homes and businesses. Peak winds, sustained at 20 to 30 miles per hour, gusts to 60 miles per hour, strongest winds from late Wednesday night through Thursday afternoon. Scattered power outages are possible. Rainfall, 4 to 8 inches. Flooding rain threat, moderate, level 3 out of 4, Wednesday afternoon through Thursday afternoon.